Hello, fellow Divine Feminine. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I want to check in on some secrets, in case there are any secrets we should know about from that masculine fellow. Of course, as I always say, um, it has nothing to do with gender identity or just physical sex. It has nothing to do with that. It's energy dynamic labels. So that's all I mean by that. <laughs> and it's not to be triggering or offensive in any fashion. So if I say he in relation to divine masculine, that's all that that's about. It doesn't have to be a man. Okay, got a couple of couple messages here. Hmm, the wolf. Confirmation that I hear you. I've been getting that one a lot. Um, this is a sign of, yeah, loyalty and wanting to do the, the traveling to, to, to find you, to get back to you um, and be together. Like you, like you both want. <laughs> mm. You came into my life like a whirlwind and uprooted my life. Thank God. <laughs> yes, they are often sort of stuck in a pattern. Well, we all get into those, don't we? Um, where they were just going along, living their life, doing what they do, doing the same job that they've been doing for a long time. Um, you know, depending. <laughs> but a lot of a lot of men, especially, seem to do that. They have a career path, and they, you know, they stick to it, and they, that's what they do for their living. <laughs> um, but they're seeing that there are other possibilities. They're seeing how you have changed over the course of your connection and they are seeing that if you can change and do things differently then so can they and they're coming around to that they're sort of realizing oh yeah i can i could do that that's not crazy after all it's it's kind of like yeah re realizing that you're not you know wrong or nuts or bad or whatever for for having done your life one way and then wanting to change it when you get to a different point like there's nothing wrong with that i think it's a big part of conditioning that says you know when you choose a career path this is what you choose and this is what you do you go to school and you study it whether it be university or trade school or however you're going to do it um and that's what you do and you follow that and you just um, but that's not true. Um, and I mean, most of us, I think nowadays know that, but a lot of, a lot of men especially don't, they don't think that way. They think that they've made those choices long ago and they're kind of fated or doomed, you know, to, to live by that sword. And they're so glad that they actually don't have to. They can they can take charge and decide, you know, I don't want to work at this job anymore. I I don't want to do this career. Or I don't want to be married to this person anymore. It's just not what it used to be. And you know, all of those emotions are pretty big and complicated, but but they're but they're there, you know. Um and of course, at first, this whirlwind of, you know, uprooting that has happened is upsetting and jarring and it's frustrating. It makes them angry, it makes them sad because they're mourning all of the stuff that they're going to have to lose. Um, and, and that's just a part of grief. And we, we do grieve those kind of relationships that change and whatnot. That's just part of the process. 
That's why this is such a slow, gradual process for us all. But the thank God here at the end is like a, a confirmation that this is good. And he understands that, that it's good. He's gotten through the, the kind of dark night part where he's sad about and angry about not wanting to live this way anymore. Um, and he's not so, yeah, angry at himself. There's a lot of anger at the self, it seems, um, for a, quite a long time for them. And they are finally kind of at the crest of that hill going, okay, this isn't actually all bad. There's, there's good things that can come of this, of course, namely you, obviously, <laughs> but other things too. Um, general quality of life will, will increase, even if that means needing to give up, you know, a certain lifestyle that they might be living. Um, because they won't be able to afford it anymore or you know, whatever Whatever that means to you um, It's less of a scary Uncomfortable anxious Notion Okay, one more One more what do we need to know? But I definitely feel it. He's coming. He's coming for us. <laughs> hmm. The butterfly. My transformation. <laughs> yeah, of course. This thank God, you know, statement. Yeah, he's sort of witnessing his own emergence from the chrysalis to carry forward that butterfly analogy there um, because he's seen you doing that uh, he's seen you come out of the the cocoon and goes oh I could do that that would be great wouldn't that be nice you know um, but as we know you know about butterflies the you know the caterpillar has to basically dissolve and turn into mushy stuff <laughs> in there and then eventually come out as this new evolution and i think that they are getting ready actually ready um to start making that emergence out and experiencing um their sort of rebirth as this newer uh better, stronger, more capable, um, well, version of themselves, And with that comes relinquishing, you know, the old stuff and leaving it behind. Um, and of course, as we know, this is a process. It's, some stuff is easy to relinquish and some stuff isn't easy to, <laughs> isn't easy to give up, right? Um, some stuff is harder to walk away from because we're, we feel compelled to need it or we feel, we think that we somehow won't survive without it. Um, whether that be a person or physical objects or, you know, anything, even money worries, you know, the, the, that's tough. Um, because obviously we need money. <laughs> That's, you know, a legitimate concern. But a lot of times, uh, masculines are particularly concerned about it because they have a great deal of commitment with their, with their money. And they want to do right by their family. And they also want to do right by you. But they might not have, you know, a great deal of wealth and feel you know, insecure about that. Unfortunately, a lot of men pick that up along their journey uh, to feel like their their value is equivalent to what they earn 
or what they have in the bank or what credit they have access to or what assets they own you know things like that a lot of a lot of men especially i'm speaking about you know specifically men i think mostly <laughs> um feel like like yeah they they that's what their value kind of is and that's what makes them attractive and of course we know that that's just nonsense um but nonetheless it's um it's a it's a a huge obstacle to overcome and it just takes time to get through but i know that i know that he is um and it's not so scary it's it's he's seeing okay i can make different choices and find solutions to these things that i'm perceiving that are problems um, he's running into new ideas and po potentially new information new people um, videos on youtube or you know whatever media they like to consume they're probably learning about that stuff and going oh, okay this isn't actually as impossible as i may have believed <laughs> which is great news actually because they're realizing they're not in a prison anymore or that they have the key to get out and it's not you know <laughs> i just had one of those old time like cartoon jails in my imagination you know the kind where like there was always like a sleeping guard with, with like the key hanging you know from him and you know there was like the the person in the prison cell would like get a stick or something and try to get the get the key off of the guard while he's sleeping and get out you know like he realizes that that he actually has the key already and doesn't need to sneak it off of anywhere um because he's already got it and that's sort of a weird little side note there that I just happened to imagine in my head. Come on, you silly cards. Silly cards. There we go. That works. Yeah, there is no running from yourself. Your person is you in another body. And I feel like that is, yeah, masculine's way of telling us that he knows that this is greater than you both together. This is something different. And it's nothing to be afraid of. Um, but, you know, there are things still left to do. Um, but... He is determined and wanting to wanting to seek you out and you know and love you openly <laughs> and be able to say that in so many words probably for the first time for a lot of us um, and they're they're looking forward to it they're looking forward to spreading their wings you know as a butterfly and going out there and living, you know, for real, for probably the first time in a, a very long time, or the first time since they met you, or, you know, however long you're, you've been on this crazy ride. <laughs> um, there is finally this idea or this understanding going on that, that this isn't anything to be afraid of. And we're all going to be better for it. But like that old, there was an old song, I forget what it's called now, but at the very, very end, as like an afterthought of the song, it's interesting that they say the good things in life take a long time. And it didn't really have anything to do with the song itself. It's an old one. Um, but, but it's true. The good things in life take a long time. They do. 
the things that are actually good and that will um, be sustainable and genuine and authentic. We all like the idea of, you know, speed and efficiency and, you know, getting things done and being productive, especially I get the feeling that that's like a very North American attitude. Um, I live in Canada, so I, you know, I feel connected to that notion that, you know, we have to do everything and get it done as quickly as possible because that's what's going to realize the greatest profit or, you know, whatever you, however you want to think of it. But um, with this kind of stuff, obviously that doesn't make any sense. Um, there is a great deal of uh, time that it needs to be invested and it's like sweat equity you know it's you got to put that in for for anything that you want to build in the future um it's very important that that we have enough patience to understand that that is a very important factor in all of this so having said all that i hope that this has this video has found you well and that you're living your best possible life at the moment and that you are continuing to ascend because the 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 more we keep going the more they can keep going um and there are no boundaries there are no limits to what to what we can do the only limits we have are the ones that we tell ourselves that we have so don't forget <laughs> i will see you very very soon